What's up goofies and welcome back to the channel. So yeah, this is part of the Christmas present. I've compiled my most popular series is and I've made compilations. This is the gun review one, but there's also the hat lore one and the gun lore one. We'll see what other compilations I'll make when I get back, but for now enjoy these 26 shorts back to back. Reviewing the Cattleman Revolver, requested by the Discord, link will be in the comments. Join up, we got all the dope goobers there. The Buck Cattleman Revolver is the first gun the player will use in Red Dead 2. It is a single action, six round capacity revolver with pretty good stats. Let's test them, shall we? Using a ped spawner, here is my assistant, Dop. Keep in mind, my Cattleman has a long rifled barrel and improved iron sights, so this is the best performance out of a Cattleman. It takes four shots of standard bullets to take out Dop. High velocity ammo takes him out in three shots. The split point ammo actually was a fatal shot the first try, and the other shots just knocked him down. Down. So to be safe, I'll say two shots of split point ammo took out DOP. Express bullets took out my DOP in three shots, though the first one was another fatal shot. All of these ammo types can one tap DOP by hitting a headshot. Explosive bullets will always be one taps it seems, so there's the ammo types. Due to this, dual wielding is effective. If you hit your shots, you can take out goons with one bullet from each gun. That cattleman gets two passes here. To test range, I had Humdum join me out here in Mexico, so say hello. Okay. Now I don't know exactly how far I am here, but looking back, I probably should have gone farther. All the ammo one taps from here, so the cattleman passes on a technicality. Final test, dueling. Humdum didn't want to duel, so Dop had to come back one final time. I won the duel fair and square. The gun survived the testing with about half condition left, meaning the Cattleman revolver passes the Duke test. Overall, a nice revolver that is a solid start and even a good choice to use for the rest of the game, but it is pretty much outclassed by every other handgun due to its status as the starter gun. Well, that concludes this gun review. My next one will probably be another revolver just to keep things tidy. For now, we can say goodbye and move on to reviewing the double action revolver. The long awaited second episode, let's not waste it. Any time. The DDP double action revolver is one of the main revolvers available to use. Notable users of this gun are Javier Gonzalez and Micah Belli. Like my last review, my double actions have improved parts so they'll perform better. Testing on Dop's brother Pod, it took four regular bullets to finish the fight. Three high velocity shots finished him and three split points cap him. Their sister Dopped took four express rounds, though the third one was a fatal shot. Explosive bullets are one shots as usual. And of course, headshots are always one taps. Dual wielding is incredibly effective as their double actions have a super fast fire rate. You can easily finish fights with this, it's just that the only downsides are ammo capacity and ammo consumption. To test range, I invited brother out here to El Presido. I went a bit further back and went for body shots to see if anything changes due to range. It took about a full cylinder of regular bullets to kill, so that's already... Yikes. High velocity did the job in two shots, split points, another full cylinder. But something happened when trying to test the rest of the ammo and like the reticle was all types of inaccurate. So unfortunately I lost some data. To make up for it, here's me demolishing two micas while dual wielding explosive bullets. The gun overall stayed pretty clean so it gets a pass. Not my favorite revolver due to the low damage output, but it's a fun gun to spray enemies with. Next revolver will be the Schofield because I said so. So without further ado, let's get into viewing the Schofield revolver. The second to last revolver I will get to online weapons once I figure out how to get Red Dead offline to work. Here we go. The Hutton and Bayard, I think how you say it. Schofield Revolver is my favorite revolver in both games, so this is going to be super biased. Hell, if Planderland and Red Harlow love this gun, it's got to be good. It is three regular shots, three shots, and buddy here is done. Two split points, check. Three high velocity shot, buddy is dead on the ground, he's done. Two express bullets, check. Headshots, one tap as usual, so the Schofield is just that gun. If anyone disagrees with me, I'm gonna order an orbital strike on your outhouse. Dual wield seemed to make these guns stronger as it was only two shots to kill. So if that doesn't convince you to switch the scoffs, I don't know what will. Range affected damage slightly, but it could also just be my aim. Three regular bullets killed him, but high velocity, split point, and express took four shots to cap the goofy. Explosive was one shot as usual. I tried something new and tried to like long range dual wield but it, it didn't go too well. This grizzly bear was pissing me off so I tried shooting him and it took 9 shots. 9 shots. If you're hunting bears, stick to a bolt action rifle. The revolver stayed pretty clean throughout the test so that is a definite pass. A great revolver to feel like a true cowboy. Next up is the Lamat, so stay tuned for that. As of right now, let's get into viewing the Lamat revolver. Highly requested and the final revolver review for now. I'll cover the navy revolver when I get the mod to work but anyway, this percussion cap and ball revolver holds 
holds nine bullets in a secondary barrel for a single shotgun shell. So this little gun packs quite the punch. At this point, you know the drill, two regular bullets, two high velocity, three splitties, though the two first shots were fatal blows, two express and one explosive. Usual stats, headshots, one tap like always. The fun part of the Lamat though is the shotgun and this thing is a one tap up close. That's probably the reason most people love this gun and my favorite part about it is the little reload noise. That ping it makes is satisfying. Dual wielding is obviously effective as you have 18 bullets and it only takes two to take someone out. Dual shotguns are an amazing touch, just look at this. Gorgeous. In terms of range, I think inaccuracy plays a part in the decreasing damage, but either way, it took four regular revolver bullets, six high velocity, four split points, four express rounds, and then one explosive bullet to kill this Owaxi. Testing the shotgun meant I had to be way closer, and it still took four shots to end it. Dual wielding is obviously not an effective way to shoot long range, even when you get lucky with one taps. I wanted to test hunting capabilities again, so I brought Bubba's dad out here. Say hi, Bubba. Just like the other one, alright. He took about 13 shots, so... Wow. Two shotgun blasts. Dual wielding was easier, but still 12 shots. This time, three shotgun shots, so... Dang, Bubba Sr. The revolver held up pretty well, so the Lamat definitely lives up to the hype. That's all the revolvers for now, online weapon soon. So next gun review will be the semi-auto pistol. I'll review the donkey soon too, so thanks for the patience, but now we can get into... Reviewing the Navy revolver. Finally reviewing the most anticipated gun, here we go. This .36 caliber cap and ball revolver is a dangerous little cannon. Based on the Colt 1851 revolver, this gun is unfortunately an online only weapon. But using the power of mods, I have it here in Kilgore's hand. Every single ammo type only took two shots to cap dop. Well, explosive was a one tap, but an amazing performance so far. Dual wielding is just perfect, down to the minute details. I can see what makes this revolver stand out in y'all's eyes. I brought back the dual test and yeah, it performed well. I mean, hey, I think any gun would work in a duel. Range did affect damage though. It was five regular bullets, four high velocity, four split points, four express, and then one explosive. So yeah, just be up close when using these navies. I tried apologizing to Bubba and he reciprocated with a crushing bite into my ribs. I rewarded him with about 16 express rounds to the tail. To the victor, the spoils. Overall, a really solid weapon. I can see why you guys were throwing tantrums to review this gun. Next up, I'll review the Turkoman, so stay tuned for that. Duke Comics websites and membership should drop soon. I just need time setting it all up. But for now, let's get into reviewing the semi-auto pistol. Right away, I'm going to say that this video is going to be out of order. After I recorded the footage, I also managed to get online weapons to work. So now I can review the Navy revolver, elephant rifle, improved bow, stuff like that. Back to this, the Peters and Jansen semi-auto pistol is a eight round, well, pistol. The wiki states it has the lowest damage out of all sidearms, but is this true? Regular bullets finished off DOP in 3 shots, high velocity 5 shots, split points 3 shots, express 4 shots, with both explosive and headshots being 1 taps. Damage was all over the place, so aim upper chest for the best results. Dual wielding scattered the results even more, varying between 2 to 4 shots to end DOP. The only guarantee was explosive 1 shots and obviously headshot. Range really hurt the damage as it was 5 shots with regular bullets to take down DOP. Jeez. High velocity was 7 bullets, you know, might as well have taken the whole damn mag. Split points, three shots, express, three shots, and explosive, one shot. Using Rampage, I saw that the bullets were doing around 11 damage per shot, so... Whew. Dang. This doesn't mean that the pistol completely sucks as the fire ray is quick. Look how quickly Fatty was obliterated. Fatty too? Didn't stand a chance. Bubba Senior Senior? Nah, Brody was knocked out cold. This random buck? His balls didn't stand a chance. So where it lacks in damage, it makes up for it in fire rate. The condition was alright, about 2 bars left, so the semi-auto pistol isn't too bad of an option. Unless you're relying purely on pistols for range, there are worse options. <coughs> Double action. Next review should be the Navy Revolver, just to finish up that section for good. But for now, let's get into reviewing the M1899. I've been harassed enough, so I will finally review this. The Peters and Jansen M1899 is an 8 round capacity semi auto pistol. Available only in the Sandini Gunsmith, this gun is a hot commodity. Being a pistol does slightly less damage than a revolver. It took about 3 regular bullets, 3 high velocity, 2 split points, 4 express, and 1 explosive to end up. Obviously, not all at once, but still. I noticed that the pistols have more knockback, I guess that's the word. Since you have to use more bullets, they get pushed back more. Do whatever you want with that info. Dual wielding is really what these pistols were made for. It took about 3-4 to four bullets to take down DOP, but with how quick those bullets fired, it makes up for it. Testing range was a bit difficult as the improved iron sights removed the front post. So I am left with the back sight only. This made aiming in first person useless as I couldn't hit my shots, so I resorted to the reticle. DOP took 7 regular bullets, 6 high velocity, 5 split points, 5 express, 
than one explosive. Hungry mother- Like I said in my last review, pistols are not meant to be used for range. When I used it on Fatty, he managed to absorb most of the damage. I even got scared as I thought he would bite into my ribs like a certain creature. I'm not naming names. The condition was pretty bad, I'll say, for how much I used it. About half of the condition was left. I'll say that pistols go through gun oil quicker as the semi-auto was much the same. Overall, not my favorite gun, but still fun to use, especially in Deadeye. Don't even get me started on that. We're halfway through the pistols, just need to cover the Mausers and Volcanics. After those, I'll begin to review shotguns and repeaters and rifles and miscellaneous stuff. But as of right now, let's get into the Mauser. My personal favorite pistol, let's get into the Dietz. Imported from Germany, the Molberg Mauser is a 10 round internal magazine semi-auto pistol. A relatively new weapon by 1899, I love the gun for looks and functionality. Out of all the pistols, this one seems to have the most damage. All ammo types took three shots to finish Dobbs' Mexican cousin, Doble. Except Express, Express took sh two shots, and Explosive was obviously one shot. What an upgrade. As with all the pistols, the strengths of the Mauser are showcased when dual wielded. The three shot to kill was still here, so it took a second to finish Doble. In fact, sometimes it took two bullets. As with all sidearms, range is the real weakness. For my beloved Mauser, it took four regular bullets bullets, 5 high velocity, 5 split points, 3 express, and 1 explosive to cap doble. Since Bubba was unavailable for reasons, I brought Fatty back for round 2. He didn't survive long enough for round 3. I wanted to duel the gunslingers this time, and yeah, this might have been the gun that shot Jim Calloway. Flacco suffered at the hands of pistol spam, sorry brother. I also killed Billy Midnight because there can only be one gunslinger wielding the Mauser. But overall, the Mauser is a very good pistol that deserves the praise I've given it. Condition was pretty good for how much I used it, so get this gun as soon as it's available. The only issue I see with it is the fact that you can't carry as much pistol ammo. Only 200 bullets compared to the 400 revolver bullets you can carry. Channel update, but I now have a membership. Lowest price is 2 bucks and highest is 10. You get a bunch of dope benefits like prioritized video requests, Luna picks, early access to vids, special shoutouts, etc, etc. These are just some of the benefits and there's many more. Don't feel obligated to buy as nothing on my normal channel will change. This is just extra content for those of you that want to support the channel. Thanks for allowing me to even make it here. You guys are the real heroes. Anyway, now we can get into viewing the volcanic pistol. The final pistol review, so let's get on with it. The Hutton and Bayard volcanic pistol is an 8 round capacity repeating action pistol. Think of this as a Lancaster in pistol form. Even though it is isn't my favorite, I'll still give it a fair test. Against Dop here, the pistol fired two of every ammo type and finished Dop rather quickly. Explosive was obviously a one shot. Dual wielding is an interesting case for these guns as sometimes they fire two bullets immediately or sometimes fire two bullets a bit slowly. I feel like it depends on Deadeye, but nevertheless, the volcanics are good dual wielded. Being a mini repeater, you think accuracy would be perfect. I missed a few times though, I think it was mostly my fault. Damage was affected a little bit, it took three regular bullets, four high velocity, three split points, five explosives and one explosive to knock out Dot. Due to recent strikes by my animal assistants, I needed a new target. Waxy was out of town, so I decided to take his pet bison out for a walk. I'll need to explain this to him later though. Yeesh. This cougar and panther duo also didn't stand a chance. While not my favorite pistol, I can't argue with the results here. A very powerful fictional counterpart to the real volcanic pistol. IRL, the rocket ball ammo the volcanic was chambered in was pretty weak, so seeing it perform well in Red Dead 2 is amusing. This was the final pistol review, but not the final sidearm review, there is still the sawed off shotgun. With that review, I'll be moving into shotguns, after which it'll be repeaters and rifles and miscellaneous stuff. Thanks for the recent support, as of recording this, we are almost at 20k on TikTok, which is great. I'm catching up to all the greats like James Charles. Thanks again, and now we can get it. Reviewing the sawed off shotgun. Welcome to the final sidearm review, but the first shotgun review. The Peters and Jansen sawed off shotgun is a shortened version of the double barreled shotgun. It holds two 12 gauge shells, so this little cannon can take out two people before needing to reload. Load. Because of the power, this means up close every ammo type will one shot. Chances of needing another shot are rare unless you aim for limbs. Dual wielding is super effective to take out crowds of people. So if you're ever in San Denis and need to quickly clear cops, go for it. Before the test, I assumed range would be an issue, but nope. This shotgun just demolishes at all ranges. The incendiary buckshot was a bit iffy, but overall pretty good for a shotgun. It took some time finding that sweet spot though. These boom sticks are useful against all animals, though it depends on the size. Rabbits or in this instance and squirrels will obviously be decimated by this, and Bubba will also be demolished. They don't know these shoddy son. I couldn't deal with these, and what a missed opportunity. Yeah, it's overkill, but imagine the prick's face when he sees the gap. The condition was pretty good for how much I used this, so definitely a good sidearm. Overall, I'd say this.
this gun is a very good choice if you know you're getting into a fight. At the end of the day, I'd still rather have a Navy or a Schofield in my holster rather than the shotgun, but that's it. I'll review the Morgan next and maybe some MK content if I can get ideas. Shout out to channel members, you guys rule, but for now we can get into reviewing it. the pump action shotgun. The best shotgun ever, let's commence with the worship. The Lancaster shotgun is a five round pump action shotgun. It fires 12 gauge shells that can vary from buckshot, slugs, incendiary buckshot, or explosive slugs. This gun is available in most gunsmiths and can be obtained for free if the player has the ultimate slash special edition of Red Dead 2. This is the first long arm of tested so expect some differences in the testing procedures. Testing damage is different as being a shotgun is going to be more powerful. It one shotted at seemingly all ranges. It was only when I scooted back that some ammo types started to falter. With buckshot it finished up in three shots. Slugs did the job in two shots though the first one left Dop extremely weak. Incendiary and explosive were one shots from the range due to the effects. Like the fire burned Dop and finished the job and, and the explosion obviously seared Dop's face looking like Gus. The hunting capabilities is another plus for this gun, especially against legendary animals. Ignore my guts being torn out of my torso, but since legendary animal pelts can be damaged, I recommend loading a pump with explosive slugs and just go crazy. This isn't related, but look at the animation. A pump action shotgun firing in semi-auto without cocking the hammer or reloading. Past that, the condition was great. Barely half a bar down. Also, admire this design. You will never see anything like this anywhere else. Overall, the pump is a very good choice for a secondary long arm. Real destructive when needed but can be useful for tagging some goofies from far away. Personally it's my favorite shotgun of all time but let me know what you all think down below. I'm thinking of starting another series soon just so it isn't pure reviews. Speaking of them the next gun review will be the double barreled, the long arm version anyway. In terms of force review I don't know maybe the Missouri Fox Shotter or something like that. I'll figure it out but for now we can get into viewing the double barreled shotgun. Two reviews in a row is crazy but I don't have any other footage on hand so enjoy. The DDP double barreled shotgun is the big brother of the sawed off shoddy. Same dual barrels and fires the same 12 gauge shells. Both versions of the shotgun have external hammers and are deadly up close. Testing on the live version of Zop, the shotgun obviously one shots. I mean this is a bigger version of the sawed off we're talking about here. The immense power makes up for the lack of dual wielding. Being a double barreled, I thought range would be this gun's weakness, and it sort of is. Dop took 3 shells of buckshot before napping, though the second shot left him with 8 HP. Dop ate 2 slugs like the fatty he is. He couldn't handle the spiciness of incendiary or explosive though, as it took 1 to clap him. In terms of hunting, you cannot go wrong with the light version of the elephant rifle. Bubba could not handle these back shots. Paw! Fatty ate some more and still bit off more than he could chew. After these rigorous tests, the condition was amazing. Literally right off the shelf type of condition. Overall a very solid choice that truly encapsulates the damage a shotgun could do. Between this and the pump, no limb is safe. So when you are feeling devious and want to cause some major mayhem, use this. We recently hit 18k on YouTube which is terrific. In terms of special, I might just spend some time hanging out with uh, the server, so join to be included. Le Leak will be in the bio on both of my platforms. For now though we can get into Viewing the semi-auto shotgun. Heavily requested by a bunch of you goofballs, let's get into it. The Brune et Fabre semi-auto shotgun is a powerful weapon with a 5 round capacity too. As the name suggests, this firearm doesn't need any type of manual chambering, as the gas system allows for rapid shots in quick succession. So this means that the gun is an instant kill in short range. Obviously the reason you all use this weapon. Combined with the spammability, it makes it quite an annoyance. Anyway, the range is the only real downside with this weapon. It took all 5 shots of buckshot to down dop, and that's with these being upper body shots. Slugs do better as it only takes 2 to cap dop. Explosive one shot it as usual, but there was an issue with incendiary. The first shot missed, and the second shot just knocked dop over without inflicting any fire damage. And then the third shot actually acted like it was supposed to. So for the sake of simplicity, 2 shots of incendiary. Like I mentioned earlier, the ability to spam really helps with hunting. Now, I don't recommend spamming regular animals as you obliterate the pelt. But since legendary animals don't take pelt damage, fire away. I forgot to inspect the shotgun but I assume the durability wasn't that low as other shotguns weren't as damaged. Overall a very destructive weapon that lives up to the hype. I still prefer the pump for looks but this isn't too far behind. Our next gun review ends our shotgun mini series and I'll begin with rifles just to get those over with but for now we can get into reviewing the repeating shotgun. Same deal as last time this is the only thing I can release in time. I'm working on the chapter 6 shorts compilation so that's what's eating up most of my time. Also in the last video I said the semi-auto shotgun was operated by a gas system when actually it works off a recoil spring system. 
Might be. Anyway, the Lancaster repeating shotgun is a lever action shotgun that fires 12 gauge shells out of its 6 round tube. The fire ray is comparable to a pump action, so while you won't be putting up semi-auto numbers, it still will be destructive. Like all other shotties, this thing demolishes anything within 15 feet. Short range, the special ammo types are unnecessary. I would say they're needed for long range, but these tests prove me wrong. Using regular shells, it was a one tap at first, but pushing dot farther back only made the first shot a fatal bleed out. Slugs are two shots with the special shells being one shots per usual. So this means that in my test, the repeating shotgun is better than the semi-auto. Would you figure that? Hunting with this thing is pretty good as expected. Just don't use it on small creatures and you'll be good. I'm sure the white bison didn't mind losing the chance to have kids again. The condition was borderline perfect, so another shotgun that lives up to the hype. Either way, the repeating shotgun is a formidable firearm that is underrated in the world of Red Dead. Then again, the pump action shotgun exists, so it makes sense. I'd recommend it if you're getting bored of the usual loadout, but other than that, it does everything the same. I do love the look of the gun though, especially with my engravings. This ends our shotgun reviews, so it's rifle time. We'll start with the elephant rifle next week. Thanks to all of you for being patient. For now we can get into it. the elephant rifle. Starting off the rifles is the elephant rifle. This 38 Nitro Express rifle is used for hunting big game, more specifically the elephants that roam Africa. The rifle is an online only weapon, but by jailbreaking my Nintendo Switch I have it in story mode. This thing has one ammo type and that Nitro demolished anything in front of it. There was no need to test headshots as the 38 did more than enough damage. Due to the immense stopping power of the round, the recoil can actually knock the player down. Pretty nice detail, though I think Kentucky Ballistics will be disappointed. Range is where this gun suffers, but it isn't enough for the rifle to be classified as a shotgun. I needed to scoot a bit forward, but the job was still finished with two rounds. Hunting is where this rifle shines for obvious reasons. Still, it took a few more shots than expected to kill the big beasts. Bubba and Fatty ate the nitro for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. As I started using smaller animals, the shots necessary to kill went down as well. Since legendary animals can't damage the pelts, I tried it on the normal versions as well. Most of these normal animals gave good pelts. So if you're a perfectionist, maybe stay away from this gun if you're hunting jaggies. The condition barely suffered, so the gun gets a pass on a technicality. While impractical in combat situations, I'd be lying if it wasn't a fun gun to use. It Immensely overpowered is the name of its game, and boy does it deliver. The next rifle I'll review is the Varmint, so stay tuned for that. Until next time, but for now we can get it. Reviewing the Varmint Rifle I'd make a snarky comment about the rifle, but I'm just happy I'm editing something else other than the Duke Iceberg. The Lancaster Varmint Rifle is a 14 round capacity, 22 caliber, .22 caliber, pump action weapon that is used in hunting small game. As the name suggests, varmints, squirrels, rabbits, and most birds. I'll start with the hunting section first, just so the wrong idea isn't presented. This is not meant for combat, unless you're fighting squishy zombies. This rifle will one-shot most game, and if you're using .22 and not the tranquil rounds. Headshots also help. The tranquil darts are the most confusing ammo type I've ever seen, because you shoot the animal a shit ton of times to sedate them, and at that point you've already ruined the pelt. Not like that mattered to my legendary friends, as it took 16 shots to kill Bubba. I even stood in front of him reloading to make my point clear. Fatty took a little less, just 13 shots. I even tried the tranquil darts, but I just ended up feeling Fatty's skull cavity with Surrettes. Now onto combat capabilities, which is this gun's weakness. I mean, it's obvious, who's pulling up to a gunfight wielding a 22? Jesse is different as he had a hidden revolver. Against an average adult male known as Dop, it took 5 shots to down him. That was with me hitting vital areas as well. Headshots are one taps, just be careful where you aim. I'd be mad too if someone shot my Gucci off. These goofy trank rounds are comparable to a nerf dart, as it took 13 of them to kill Dop. Don't even get me started on headshots which took four darts to dizzy dop. Yeah, don't carry this thing as your main source of protection. Range is a nice middle ground as some hunting trips require you to have range on a target. The stats say the same, 5 22s and 12 trank darts. Using some math here, the regular 22s did about 16 damage per shot, while the tranquil darts do 5. Do with this what you will. The condition was alright, so the rifle gets a slight pass. I know what I'm doing with this gun and it's using the hunt Luna's cousins. While not practical outside of hunting, it can be fun tagging people around the world. Thanks to those of you that have followed recently, it means a lot. Thanks for also being patient, I try to upload content whenever I I can, but for now we can get into viewing the Springfield rifle. Been a minute, but I'm back. The Lancaster Springfield is a powerful single shot breech loader. This gun was favored by the military and is based on the IRL Springfield model 1888, though the one in game is slightly shorter. Despite this, the rifle's immense power means this one shot to dop with most ammo types. High velocity did take two shots though. Range slightly affected the weaker ammo types, but not by much. Regular and high velocity took two shots to the down dop, but the first shot left them with less than 5 HP. The rest of the ammo types are one-shotted. Hunting is another area where this gun shines, but if you're going to use this against fatty, use stronger ammo 
genotypes. I'm lucky he decided to stop and just stare. I don't know how I stunlocked him, but he still took 7 shots to die. Express was slightly better, taking only 6 shots. Bubba had the same results, only this time his eye managed to deflect a shot, I think. 6 Express rounds and Bubba's counting sheep. With how powerful this rifle is, I was wondering if I could get collaterals. Think of this as a new test for the rifles. Using Express, I was only able to get through 1 out of 3 dops. But using high velocity, these numbskulls didn't stand a chance. It seems 3 is the limit, as when I tried to do 5, 2 survived. Overall, a powerhouse in a short package. The only downside is a low rate of fire and slow reload. Also, you have to be pretty accurate or else you're just gonna piss off your enemy. Thanks for being patient while I was gone. Hope you enjoyed the MK video. Next review should be the bolt action. For the horses, it'll be the Shire. But for now, we can get into Reviewing it. Reviewing the bolt action rifle. My favorite rifle and one of the strongest in the game. Let's get it. The BD and Co. Bolt Action Rifle is a firearm with a 5 round capacity clip chambering using a bolt action system. I don't usually go over the IRL history of guns, saving that for a potential new series, but this rifle is based on the real Krag Jorgensen rifle. Instead of using stripper clips, there's this little box on the side that is used to feed rounds. You know, pretty interesting. But all this talk to say the rifle is insanely powerful. One to two shots and the target is down. The only ammo types that needed more than one shot were the regular bullets and split points, as the other ones one shot it instantly. This power translates pretty well into range, as the damage was only slightly effective. The ammo didn't kill Dop, it left him with around 10 HP. So I'd say this makes the gun a worthy contender to the Carcano, but I'll go more in depth in that gun review. Anyway, hunting big beasts with this gun seems fruitless at first, but compared to other rifles, this is a safe bet. Bubba ate 6 rounds of Express, Fatty ate 5, Biggie took 2, and Waxy's pet also took 2. Not too bad. Like my last review, I wanted to try the collateral damage potential, and I was a bit disappointed, as instead of 3 people, it was only 2. I even tried other rounds, but that didn't really help. Still, the bolt action rifle is a very solid choice as your primary. As with most rifles, be accurate and you'll be rewarded. This gun deserves the design I gave it. Thanks for being patient as we're almost done with rifles. Just need two more reviews done, then we can move on to repeaters. But for now, we can get into viewing the rolling block rifle. The second to last rifle, let's get through it. The Litchfield Rolling Block Sniper Rifle is a very powerful weapon that is meant for long range combat. That means the rifle has access to three different scopes for different ranges. Of course, I didn't use a scope because I ain't no bitch. Obviously, the rifle one shots at close range. The only exception is regular ammo as it took two shots. I don't know why, but that happened. Being meant for long range, Dop did not survive these encounters. Side note, but these iron sights were pretty good for being unused. It's a shame that you can't remove the scope without glitches. In terms of hunting, the rifle is very good since the fire rate is really low. Place your shots carefully. To fully test this weapon, I set up a minefield of bubbas. Some are dead and some are hungry. Against Fatty Fatterson the fourth, the rifle faltered a bit, but still managed to knock the Titan down. He swerved away from me, almost as if he didn't want to harm me. That made his death hit just a little harder. In terms of collaterals, the rolling block only managed to make it through three people. I tried five and again it didn't work, so three high velocity and you should be able to go through most objects, people, whatever's in your way. Either way, the rifle's condition was borderline perfect. Due to the high damage, it means the gun wouldn't be used as much. It's worth mentioning here, but the rare rolling block rifle has mostly the same stats. The only differences are the lack of customizability, the medium scope is locked on the rifle, and it does slightly more damage than a base rolling block, though with upgrades you can make it better. Should have mentioned it in my double barreled shotgun review, but the rare shotgun has the same stats as the base double barreled. The brass and black and steel finish and wood engravings are not changeable at all. Anyway, the next review is a Carcano, so we're almost done. For now though, we can get into the Carcano rifle. The final rifle review, so let's get it done. The Carcano rifle is a 6 round bolt action weapon that is available during the last stages of chapter 6. The rifle is based on the real life Italian Carcano, though the model in game is anachronistic, as the exact make wasn't manufactured until 1938. The only accurate part is the rear sight. The rifle is insanely powerful as the only ammo type to not one shot is high velocity. Great job JFK's nemesis. On the way to the test range I got jumped by Bubba. I guess he wanted revenge for all those times I shot a species right in front of him. He slid, I slid faster. Though the historical facts are inaccurate, the rifle sure as hell wasn't. Similar to the damage section, every ammo type except high velocity one shot it. Like my rolling block review, I use the iron sights for this test. These sights are even more gorgeous than the rolling block. Everything is just perfect. In terms of hunting capabilities, what more can be said that hasn't been said already? This beaver saw his life flash before his eyes when I aimed. This boar did not stand a chance at all. The buck took one to the skull before flopping. After all this slaughter, the rifle was still in near perfect condition. Overall, the Carcano is way better than the bolt action. This isn't a diss to that rifle, but a compliment. If the bolt action can stand up to the Carcano, that means that these are top of the line weapons. That's all the rifle's done, meaning we can now review the final section, repeaters. I'll start with the carbine next month, but for now we can get in into the carbine repeater. The final 
small set of weapons that I wished I hadn't saved for last. The reason is most of these repeaters are the same. I'll still make separate reviews, but they'll be shorter with repeating information. Anyway, the Buck Carbine is a 7 round lever action repeater. Reloaded using a 2 magazine in the stock, the rifle is the first long arm given to the player. With this, the rifle does have proper power. Most ammo types took 2 shots to down dot, but Express and Explosive only needed 1 to insta kill. I didn't use scopes this time for the range, as I did with some rifles. I'm glad I didn't as these sights are terrific. They help me one shot dop, a one shot with regular ammo. Normally it takes two shots. High velocity again one shotted, it took two shots to knock dop out, but the first shot left him with two HP. The strange part was it took three express shots to finish dop, when it usually takes one round. Either way explosive still one shotted. The rifle was effective against the likes of Bubs and Fatty. It seems Fatty felt pity for me and left me alive. He had me by the throat and let me go. I would repay this kindness with a reward, but these guns aren't going to test themselves. With high velocity, three heads were not enough to stop the bullet. Five was enough though, as it left two alive and one injured. All this chicanery left the carbine in really good shape, not even a fingerprint on the gold. Not too bad of a weapon, especially considering that this is an early game gun. That's the first repeater down, meaning next time the Lancaster will be tested. While I'm here, I'll give a few updates. Here is my proposed schedule for this week, and it might be changed. My next long form will be another MK comparison. They'll join the Discord server to stay updated. Help liven it up. That's enough out of me today, so let's get on Reviewing to Reviewing the Litchfield repeater. Second to last repeater, we're almost there, just stay with me. The most powerful rifle using the lever action platform, this 16 round weapon is unlocked near the end of chapter 6. With this, that means the most ammo types one shot adopt. Yes, even regular bullets. The explosive recording was cut due to memory issues, but since it's explosive, it would also one shot. The only ammo types that didn't kill immediately were split points and express, though the first express shot led to a bleed out. Damage did suffer a little bit when it came to range, as it required an extra shot to take down DOP. Some shots even needed three shots like split points and express. Explosive the ever lovely bullet it is, took out DOP instantly. So for the hunting part, you just have to take my word for it as my recording was cut. You can see the animal corpses that were tested on, but the Litchfield performed well. I don't remember Bubba or Fatty struggling that much. They went out peacefully, or as peaceful as you could in this environment. When it came to collateral potential, the usual stats were present here. Three heads, no problem for high velocity. Five heads, yeah, that's got a little kick that the Litchfield cannot handle. The condition barely suffered, so the gun definitely passed. Well, not my favorite repeater, that title belongs to our next and final rifle review. This is an underrated pick. Today's Duke Showcase by Gooseman will come out later today. I wasn't able to record or write a script last night. Anyway, let's go. Reviewing the Lancaster Repeater. The halfway review, let's begin. This repeater alongside a Schofield is the bread and butter of any outlaw. With a 14 round capacity tube and a fast lever action system, this repeater is a very good everyday carry. The weapon has consistent damage as Dop took two of every ammo type except explosive, of course. When it comes to range, it's good to have these iron sights to guide me. The first shot with regular ammo made Dop bleed out, but normally it does take two shots. High velocity again, two shots. It took three split points, though the second one left Dop barely alive. The same can be said for express ammo, as that also took three shots, with the second one leaving Dop in critical condition. Explosive as usual, one shot in. Against this obese thing you guys call an alligator, he ate most of my shots. He eventually got sleepy from the feast and went to sleep permanently. Fatty hit his usual grab and release, allowing me to fire the killing shots. One day, one day he'll be free. In terms of collateral shots, the Lancaster had a sub-average performance. Using high velocity, it could only go through two heads, leaving the last dot perfectly fine. On a second test, all three goobers died. Against five domes, performance was all over the place. Two died on initial impact, two survived, and one guy was simply knocked over. So yeah, I wouldn't trust this thing if you're looking to pop as many heads as possible in one go. Either way, the gun barely wore down, at least in terms of performance. The customization is beautiful, so shout out to the Sandini Gunsmith, the true hero. The next review will be the Litchfield, the next Duke Showcase will be splashy on TikTok, and the next long form will be comparing Mortal Kombat 1 and Mortal Kombat 11's version of Sub-Zero. Here's a shout out to Lucas and Martin's website, it's a fun experience so go check it out. The link will be in the comments below or search the Jubeverse on GoDaddySites.com. For now we can get into Reviewing the Evans Repeater. We finally did a Dukers We Are Red Dead Redemption gun reviews. This final repeater happens to be my favorite so expect some bias. The rifle with the most ammo capacity in the game, it is fed through a very very interesting Archimedean screw magazine. Basically, you feed around through the stock. This means the balanced weapon in game, it does slightly less damage than the Lichfield. Not enough to deter me though. Even so, the damage was consistent enough. Two shots with most ammo types took down our favorite test subject. The delightfulness of the explosive meant it was one shot. Another great plus for the rifle are the iron sights, simple and effective. For sure, the front post might be a bit much, but you won't be thinking that when a 600 pound grizzly bear comes running at you. Anyway, it again only took two shots to down dob, no matter the ammo type, two was the count. 
no more, no less. However, the gracefulness that the explosive bullet emanated means Dop went down in one shot. Bubba didn't appreciate this grace, so I unloaded an entire tube into his backside. Since Fatty was nicer today, I went easy on him and only shot him 15 times. I truly am a good Samaritan. In our favorite game of who will survive the bullet, high velocity went through three heads only, as the final two bozos remained unscathed. So they won the big prize, one between the eyes. With the condition barely dropping, this ends our final rifle review. There's still one more weapon left, one that fires sharpened sticks and occasionally dynamite. Stay tuned for that as we get into it. Reviewing the bow, the final review, so let's end it off with the weapon favored by Waxy's ancestors. Since two versions of the bow exist, I tested both, even though they gave the exact same stats. So these results apply to both the improved and base bow. There are seven types of arrows this weapon could fire. They all have varying outputs of damage. Dop ate three regular arrows before deciding to call it quits, though he couldn't handle one improved arrow, and flopped. Poison was a one shot, though it's because of the health drain effect. They survived for a few seconds after being hit with the arrow. Quite the cruel way to go. Similarly, dynamite and fire arrows instantly obliterate Dop. He's either charred or exploded, so use these arrows if you're fed up with life. Just be careful not to get hit with the kickback. The only ammo type Dop survived was small game, and it's because the damage output is similar to that of a nerf bullet. It took a barrage of arrows to finally put him down, five arrows to the forehead, ribs, and butt cheeks. The Red Dead Online exclusive tracking error also took a lot of shots to finish Dop, but this version of our test subject managed to withstand five arrows piercing his skin and fight back. Due to this, he earned a warrior's burial. Range was the most annoying test due to the constant back and forth attitude to respawn to Dops. The thing about these arrows is that they make sure your target is dead. Anyway, regular improved poison fire and explosive arrows all managed to one shot Dop respectively. Again, five small game arrows, although it was a fluke where I managed to hit a two shot. The tracking arrows took four shots this time around, so maybe they're better at range. Hunting is this weapon's clear strong suit, so it makes sense that improved arrows managed to one shot Bubba and Fatty. Because I wanted to punish myself for hurting them for the sake of content, I decided to use small game arrows against them. I took 22 arrows to knock off Bubba. Since Fatty's on a diet, he only ate 20. He also decided to have some fun and tumble around. In terms of collateral, the improved arrows followed the usual stats, but this time it managed to clear 5 heads easily. Meaning if you can hit it, it's a guaranteed 3 head shot. Since the condition of the bow cannot go down, this means that bow technically passes with 100%. The only weak arrow types are meant to be used on smaller creatures or non-lethally. That means for now, we're done. Let's get into this bow review before I tear up. <coughs> down City Islers, yeah. Reviewing the melee weapons. Y'all thought I was finished? Nah, we're just getting started. With 8 main types of melee weapons in game, that means we have a lot to go over. Let's start with fists. Made by a mixture of your mother and your father, these weapons are versatile as you can use them to grab other weapons. When the time comes though, you can always use them as weapons yourself. Normally punching people takes quite a few hits for a knockout, but tackling first then spamming the F key for a beatdown means you can finish a fight in 3 hits. Not the best melee option, but it will do in a pinch. Next up are knives. Forged from the steel that killed Abraham Lincoln, this knife can one shot from behind. This is due to the attack being a sneaky one. A more open tackle means you have to stab and slice a few times. About 4 to be exact. But in the same tackle position, you can execute Dop with a throat slit for a quick death. The next weapon type is a hatchet, a throwable axe. This leviathan axe looking weapon can be used for quick executions via sneak attacks or tackles. There's also a hammer, but the weapon shares animations with the hatchet, with the only difference being you can't throw it. Another subsidiary of the hatchet is the cleaver. This is sort of the best of both worlds, combining a knife and a hatchet. It's quick and nimble like a knife, but can be thrown like a hatchet. Finally, we can look at Jason's favorite blade. This is a knife, but on roids. Quick executions and only takes a few slashes versus the regular four slashes a knife takes. The final two melee weapons are actually throwables. These throwing knives are mini daggers that can be tossed. Three ammo types exist, normal, improved, and poison. All one shot, but poison takes a little to kick in. Up close, these act like regular knives. They even have their own unique animations for executions. Tomahawks are similar to hatchets with three ammo types existing, regular, improved, and homing. The all one shot with the homing tomahawks having a sort of boosted aim assist basically makes it easier to hit if your cursor's not on the target. The final weapon we'll look at are the bolas. Essentially ropes with the weight at the end of each line. This makes it easier to immobilize enemies and allows you to quickly hogtie them. Other than this, they don't do much else. Hunting is limited with melee weapons as you can beat animals to death, but it isn't recommended. If you wrangle lighter creatures, then you can get closer to the knife to execute them quickly. An easier and more humane way of getting perfect pelts. The only weapons with range are hatchets, cleavers, throwing knives, and tomahawk, all of which one shot at the appropriate range. There we go, the final review. <laughs> Ah, fuck off. I'll be back to review that later, Ooh, but the finale. Maxim gun, and by extension all the other cannons. So Mr. Englishman, this is your wish come true. A Christmas miracle, if you will. Four cannons exist within Red Dead 2, two Gatling guns, and two actual cannons. But they are still immensely powerful. Because of this, there is no point in explaining how many shots it takes to kill Dop. These are mounted weapons meant for war. Of course, a single fleshy man can survive more than one shot. Range is actually a weak point for some of these cannons. The Hotchkiss cannon had trouble hitting Dop from this far away. Considering this was used to down a warship during 
in Chapter 5, I'm a little disappointed. Despite this, the other weapons did the job just fine. Hunting is a no-brainer, as again, these soft animals will not stop the giant rounds coming its way. Bubba and Fatty went out quickly, but not peacefully. Yeah, these bullet holes are no joke. All in all, big strong gun, very good. Well, not practical, it is good fun. While I'm here, I'm just gonna review the Molotov and Dynamite. <laughs> Big boom kill lots of dops. Even work on fat bear and big gator. Volatile better because big explosion. Okay, we're finally done with the reviews. Thanks for sticking around and supporting the series. This has been a 40 part series. Yeah, we've been here for a while. We'll move on when I come back from break, but for now, let's cover. And there it is. The entire series condensed into one 38 minute video. If you have watched the entire thing through, you are certainly a legend. Take this award. So yeah, this is the first compilation I will be posting two other ones again. Merry Christmas, thank you so much for supporting the channel. Stay safe out there, God bless, and goodbye.